Welcome, everyone, to the Asian Voices Radio Podcast, where you'll find real Asian American conversations, including all the topics you are too afraid to ask your Asian parents. I'm your host, Linda Schwartz. My guest today is Dr. Emily Latran. She's a dentist with her own practices in Southern California and the founder of the Emily Latran Foundation. Additionally, Dr. Latran is a motivational speaker, high performance coach, and author of several books. From Refugee to Renaissance Woman shares her story, coming to the U.S. as a refugee at 13 years old, and her newest book, Commit to Embracing Your Big Life, offers insights and strategies to building a strong business. Welcome, Dr. Latran. I'm so happy to have you here. Thank you so much. It's absolutely my honor to be here on the show. And um, I'd like to add a little bit to that introduction. I'm actually absolutely. the best mom in the world. I think we're going to have to fight over that title because I feel like I'm the <laughs> best mom. Well, you know, unless you claim it publicly, um, I think I'm going to own that title. So. Okay, I guess I'll, I'll concede yeah, today. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but Dr. Latrim, before we get started, what I'm really struck by is that, you know, with the books that you've written and what you've done and what you've been able to accomplish, I'm really struck by the essence of personal growth and personal achievement here. And um, I'd love to know a little bit more about your story, your origin story, how you came to the U.S. and and how you um, started your life here. But, you know, before we go into all of your accomplishments, I'd love to know more about your journey. Well, thank, thank you for asking that. I think a lot of time how we tell our story is how we live our life. And a lot of time the story of our life can really help us grow, right? And it, it could strengthen us and sometimes it could check us up a lot. And, and, and I see it, looking back, I see it as a blessing. I was actually uh, born in Vietnam back in the late 60s. Uh, that was during the Vietnam War. And uh, uh, growing up, I was right in Saigon, so we were the last place that fell uh, when the communists took over. So I was I was able to watch a lot of images of the war. You know, there, there were bombings and, and dead bodies and, and people fleeing villages. And every night, watching that on black and white TV back then, um, it, it, it was scary. And uh, when I was eight, the war ended, the Americans left, and the communists took over. And life just changed overnight because we had Big Brother watching. We we were standing in line to get food for the family, whether it's old rice, stale bread, or, or modi noodle. So as a kid, I used to stand in one of those lines. Um, one year after the communists took over, my mother passed away due to cancer. And then a couple of years after that, Vietnam was going to go to war again with China in the north and Cambodia in the West, and they were drafting all the young men to go to war again. And at that time, my youngest, uh, my my aunt, she's, the, she's my dad's youngest sister, she decided to leave the country. She was going to take her two kids, two of my cousins, guy cousins, and my older brother to leave and escape the impending draft. And I'm a girl, I wasn't going to be drafted, but my dad told me that I had to go help my aunt. So I left the country at 13 years old. I left my dad and two younger siblings behind, and I never saw them again. But this was that part of the, the Vietnamese exodus, if you were looking back in history. Uh, millions of Vietnamese tried to leave the country, and some perished in the ocean, and some made it to a um, refugee camp. And then from there, we uh, we applied to come to, we call it the third the third country of freedom, uh, to to start our lives again. So I, for me, I was lucky enough where I was young enough that I wasn't worried, right? Because we weren't really thinking about the future. It just I'm just following my aunt. Um, but at the same time, I was old enough to to understand this is a big change, right? Like for some reason, I have a feeling I'm not gonna see my dad very soon, right? Because we were going you know, from, from home to seven days in the ocean to a refugee camp. And the next thing was the U.S. And when we came, we had a lot of help from the government. We had food stamp, we had welfare, we had housing. Um, we used to sleep 
Well, I used to sleep on the floor for several years because there were 10 of us cramming in a two bedroom apartment. And uh, I was biking to school and delivering newspaper. Um, I, I remember I would stand in line to get free lunch and watching a lot of the other kids taking off in a car, right? Uh, to go get lunch somewhere else. And always wondering, you know, what would lunch taste like <laughs> if, it, <laughs> if I were in one of those cars? And and I see, I think because of all of that, I was very driven. It's always, you know what? I'm here. The only way to go is up, right? Like it, it wasn't so much, I want to be like them. It was, I want to be able to do more from where I was. And then it's all, um, as you know, a lot of us Asians, it's always about the family. Um, we feel obligated, we, we can call it that, that we have to live up to their dreams and their expectation. And that certainly was true for me. You know, I, I'm in this country. I know my dad was still back home and, you know, the family and all of my cousins, families back home. We got to work and we got to support the family back there. So um, I think we have more motivation, right? More of a drive to to succeed because we know that there are other people at home over there uh, dependent on us. And um, so I think I was very blessed because I have that internal drive um, and going through hardship just make the drive a lot stronger. And uh, so I would credit a lot of that to to the refugee story. Absolutely. I, I, you know, I know my family can relate to that. And I also have stood in the free lunch line. And <laughs> um, I totally understand that whole thing. Um, and I and I uh, totally agree that 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 being there definitely instills some sort of internal drive um, to succeed, to do better. So I'm always curious to know, like when I meet another person who's into personal development and personal growth, like, I mean, this is totally my jam. I, I'm really excited to speak to you today because this is like the core of, of everything that I do in my life. Um, do you remember the moment that you picked up a book or saw something or read something that got you interested in personal development? You know, I, I don't think, um, I believe in fate, right? It's, why did you pick up that book, right? Or why did I see that show or that movie? So I think in my case, um, I was reading books all along, uh, but I think it would, it, I would have said it probably was me picking up a book by um, Tony Robbins, uh, Awaken the Giant Within. And I, and I remember reading that book and he made some references. Then I went and I looked at the references, right? And then I started reading the references. And that's where I read uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, you know, Think and Grow Rich. Some of these yeah. books that really is used by a lot of other, um, you know, thought leaders. All the gurus. Yes, all the gurus <laughs> and teach you that. And then I just kind of been on that journey. He's always been reading kind of. You know, sometimes curiosity will really get you into trouble, right? So, like, I wonder what he's going to say. So, like, I wonder what this book is about. So, that's that's kind of where my journey started. And then I got very lucky to um, to meet some of the gurus in real life. And it just strengthened that dedication and understanding that, you know, it's it's like a your life dedication that you, that you say, okay, I, I want to learn this and I want to understand this. And then I want to apply it. And then after that, I want to tell everybody about it. <laughs> you know? And I want to teach it, that kind of a thing. So, yeah, um, yeah I, I think uh, for me, it's just several lessons learned along the way, being able to meet some of the gurus uh, in real life. And, um, and absolutely, books change lives. Yeah. So what was the biggest lesson that you learned out of all of that? Well, reading, meeting everybody. Yeah. Well, I think the biggest lesson I learned is that you have to keep being a student. Like you, you can't reach your potential in, in, in a way. Um, one of the favorite things that um, I ask people to do and I learned from many of the gurus is, you know, what is, what is your God-given potential? 
right? And are you up there yet? And the answer is obviously no. Now, when you don't understand personal growth and you got to a certain income level and let's say a certain level of happiness, you say, okay, that's it. This is my potential. When you understand personal growth and you say, you know what, what kind of impact can I create, right? How much can I give back? How can I change people's lives? Like I'm a dentist, so I'm in my office. Well, how do I change somebody's life across the ocean, right? That come from the personal growth that 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 is so much bigger than what we do every day. And um and I think that's one of the biggest lessons that I learned is to try to live up to the God given potential. Absolutely. Does that makes sense, yeah. Totally, absolutely. It definitely makes sense. I mean, um for me, you know, what comes forward is that that it's limitless. Our potential is limitless. So once we reach a certain point, there's always more to learn. There's always more to get about ourselves. There's always more to give. And it reminds me of something that I learned a long time ago was, you know, learn, earn, return, and repeat, right? Learn, earn, return, repeat, learn, earn, return, repeat. So that's, that has always stuck with me. And I'm always, um, I'm always fascinated when I meet people like you, because it's like, there's this, there's this sense of like this personal excavation that happens for you to stand where you are to be this contribution. So I just wanted to acknowledge you for that. And now I'm really curious to know about your newest book, Commit to Embracing Your Big Life. Um, that, that particular book is, as you can tell from the title, Commit right? People, people talk a lot. People say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. But are you actually committed? Like, are you actually going to carry out the action? And the big life is just what we, we have just discussed. When, when you just think about life, that's just maybe just your life, your kid's life, your family life. When you're talking about the big life, it, it goes beyond, right? Your own home and your own family. So it's, I, I share a little bit of my story in there, and then I share some strategies um, on how to live that big life. And a lot of it are the high-performance um, habits, high-performance principles uh, that I'm certified in that process, and I take people through that framework. So, for example, having having clarity, right? Knowing mm. knowing what you want, uh, even beyond knowing what you want is why do you want it? Uh, for example, I. I help a lot of business owners grow their business. And sometimes the question is, okay, well, how, what do you, where do you want to take your business? Well, to a million dollar. Well, why a million dollar? I don't know. You know, everybody else talking about a million dollar. So I'm talking about a million dollar. But the million, that, see that those goals got to make sense to you. Otherwise, the first time you hit a bump, you got a challenge, you're just going to go set some other goals. You're going to go do something else. But if there's a, personal reason why you want to get to those goals, right? Then you, when you have that clarity, you, you're more committed. All of your actions would focus on getting to that goal. And you're going to see that you can achieve more. Um, other other um, parts of the commitments, for example, is productivity. People, people say, you know, I have a, I have a to-do list, right? Then I check off all these things on the to-do list. Well, are all of those to-do lists specifically toward your goal? So, for example, when I'm talking to business owners and they proudly show me their to-do list, uh, one of the questions I could ask them is, which one of these activities actually create business income? Oh yeah. Then they look at the list and they go, uh, okay, there are 20 things here and um, 10 of them create the income, right? And the, and the question beyond that is, okay, there are 10 of them creating the income. Which of the 10 do you have to do yourself? Like you're the only person who could do it. And, and what that does is it, it helps them look at it and say, hey, I'm so busy all day long, but if I want to get to that million dollar, whatever my goal is, only half of the thing I'm doing is what's going to bring that. And then the other part is I, you know, I'm not the only one who have to do this. And so I should learn how to delegate. 
So when people say, yes. when people say they want to be more productive, they want to do more, and they're wondering why, they would tell me, hey, you have so much energy, like you're doing a lot. And I said, no, that's not actually true. I'm only doing the things that get me to my goal. And I don't get distracted per se, because if it's not my strength, I don't want to do it. Because it, it's just going to stress me out and take me Absolutely. and take me a long time, right? So I'm, I'm going to focus on what I do best and the rest I will delegate. So some of those ideas are in the book because it will help you, you know, solidify and get your commitment down so you can live that big life. And obviously, sometimes in order to live a big life, we got to be in company of the right people, right? So absolutely. Yeah. So I love what, what Kathleen is doing with, you know, the younger generations. And that, that just makes us sound so old. <laughs> But, you know, the students, right, um, have them be in the right company among themselves. They they want to have that voice. They want to create movies. They want to be in theater, whatever it is, in, in arts, right? Get them, get them in the room together. Get some experts to help them out, help them create projects and achieve things. That's what's going to build your confidence. That's what's going to help you go on and you know, be more committed rather than they're trying to search for resources. They're trying to do things on their own. And so I think one of the things I would challenge any business owners, any leaders is, you know what? You got your established business. I challenge you to do something for the younger generation, right? I challenge you to start creating that legacy, legacy now yes. while you're still living, right? Because <laughs> sometimes people think, oh, when I pass away, this is what I'm going to live. No. I want people to start talking about your legacy now, every day. What what are you doing to to help change lives? And just start with with where you are. You know, Kathleen is already into this field. That's the first. That's the easiest way for her to give back because she's already an expert there, right? Imagine if she wants to go and do a mission. Yes, she can do that. But she can start with this right now, rather than trying to think about the mission, which is something that may not be part of her everyday life. Right, right. Yes. And speaking of legacy, you are the founder of the Emily Latran Foundation. Let's talk a little bit about that. So what's the mission and tell us more about it. Well, you know, I've learned this and we were just talking about being around the right people. So I learned this when I was part of an organization and we were, again, it's about looking at being bigger than yourself. And one way to do that is to be involved with a nonprofit. And of course, being the bossy person myself, I figure I'm just going to create my own. <laughs> so I can just do whatever I want, right? So, That's right. Yeah, so it starts out with mobile dentistry. And uh, because I'm, I'm a dentist, so I was thinking, okay, let's do a nonprofit, let's create. You know, let's raise funds and do a mobile dental unit and we can go, we can, you know, serve, um, you know, underserved areas. Um, we, we got a little challenge there because this is years ago and I was looking at it and it's $300,000 to get the mobile that I want. And I said, okay, well, we, I mean, we're not going to get stressed out trying to raise 300000 That to me is impractical. So I'm going to start with doing free dentistry, free dentistry day in my office. and and so. I did that uh, for many years, right? I do that for many years. It's one or two days a year where, where people can come in. And, and a lot of time it's veterans or a family of disadvantaged background. They come in and we just do some free dental work for them. And then I call, um, you know, like the dental lab and say, hey, I need this. I'm donating my work. Can you donate your work, right? Because we for, for the same cause. And and so the way, the way it is, is I want to help. I want to give back. 300,000 was a little too much, too stressful. I don't need that stress right now. I'm just going to start where I am, right? And beyond that, um, when I started getting into coaching, and so we'll, we'll be doing coaching to help business owners um, of, you know, diverse background who may need a little help, right? Um, or consulting um, for women. So one of the projects I'm working on right now is is women leadership, helping women and, and you know how we are, especially Asian women. Uh, you, you know, I, I, I wrote a, um, a book recently um, that just kind of came out. 
and uh, it's called The Modern Woman to Have It All Without Sacrifice. And I talk about being the perfect mom, the best daughter, the wonderful wife, the ultimate boss, the exceptional entrepreneur. All of these things that we women think that we got to do it all. And we don't. Because, again, for us, we're carrying those expectations, those values, those family values. You got to be all that. And sometimes you don't have to be. You just... You pick whatever project you're working on that is most important to you and you try to get to that project, but you don't necessarily need to be that perfect daughter 110% of the time, right? Or to be that perfect mom. Uh, like you never mess up anything. You never pick up your kids <laughs> late from school. <laughs> I'm, I mess up every day. <laughs> That's why I conceded today because I was like, ah, yeah, I probably messed up sometimes today. I'm not the very best mom today. Okay. Yeah. So um, that I hope that answered your your question. Absolutely. Yes. yes. And so you know, I mean, what came forward while you were sharing that was, you know, to start where you are with what you have and the resources that are available to you. Yes. And and start, you know, if you have a big goal, look at that, and if it's too much, then again, start where you are with what you know and start to give from there. I love that. Um, so for me, my commitment this year is to do random acts of kindness where I can. And that is about starting where you are with the resources that you have and with, with what you can give. It doesn't have to be a lot. It can be just buying somebody coffee behind you. Right. right? And, and that kind of ripples out into the world. And I love that. And for those of that are listening and want to be a contribution in some way, shape or form, like what's your wisdom or what's the information that you can share aside from, you know, starting where you are and with the resources that you have, like what other tips are your, uh, do you see coming forward to share? Yes. You know, um, I think going back to clarity, right. When you're real clear with what you want and why you do, you know, why you want it and why you do it. It's, it's actually it's pretty easy to try to to ask people to help you, right? Um, so let's say if you want to let let's say uh, want a greener planet, just for example, right? So uh, thinking about being productive, I don't want you to go and start doing research and try to in, reinvent the wheel. Look at people who are already doing that. Uh, partnering with them. And I don't mean partner as in real partner. You could say, hey, you know what? I can see that you're doing that. I like to be part of that. What can I do? Because sometimes they can just give you all the resources and the roadmap so you can do whatever you want, right? And then at whatever point, if you want to create your own foundation, you can do that. You can enlist your friends, your your family, the community where you are. But look at look at the people who are already doing things. Learn from them. Uh, get the roadmap from them, get the resources from them, because that's, I, to me, a lot of time, and one of my pet peeves is excuses, right? I, I hate it when people say, I don't know, right? But if you ask them, where is the closest restaurant with however many reviews, they'll pull up their phone and they'll give you all the details. But if they want to learn about, they do something, they will tell you, I don't know. I don't know where to start. Well, start with what you have, uh, um, which is the resources you have. It could be your phone, could be Google, could be a friend who is um, already doing that, right? Look up a nonprofit, like a nonprofit who's doing, who's trying to make a green planet, that kind of a thing, and and just start the ball rolling there. The I think the key thing is is just like the book you mentioned is the commitment, right? So. I understand yes. why you want to do that because, you know, I belong to organizations where I meet this friend this year and they're doing Project A and then next year they're no longer doing Project A. They kind of drop it. They're doing Project B, right? And and those are the people who keep on doing stuff and not, not, <laughs> don't really get it to whatever the highest level that they could. And I think a lot of time that has to do with a lack of clarity. So uh, my advice is, to get real clear why you want to do certain things, right? 
whatever your goals are, whatever, whatever your projects are, look up resources. The fastest way to do something is to get a mentor, whether it's a, a coach, a consultant, you know, um, somebody that you can ask questions to. I know sometimes it takes an investment, but if you think about it, even as a as a kid, right? If you want to learn how to dance, you got to take dance lessons, right? Yes. Right? If you want to go and compete on uh, team sports, and I'm sure you, you know these things, a lot of the kids who are competing on team sport, they have private coaches. You get them to do even, oh God, yeah, yes. do better. And then we come to life <laughs> and whatever your aspirations are, and you decide that you're going to do all this by yourself. And, and sometimes you get stuck and you... And you give up. And sometimes that would be your biggest contribution. You know, whatever drives your heart, I think that's easiest to become your biggest uh, contribution to the world. And just give it that investment, that investment of time, that investment of effort. And sometimes there's a financial investment. But I think it's worth it if you say that, you know what, this is one of the goals I want to achieve. In life. Yes. Oh, I'm so inspired already. I'm like, okay, what, what, what? I have... <laughs> I, I, I personally have coaches in my life that I've hired to do the things that I want to do because at some point when you want a big life, when you want, when you see your, some people see their potentials, they see their own potential and they, they know that they have this, this big life in them. They just don't know how to get there. And sometimes it's like you get to that point and, you know, for me, I did this for years. I can do it on my own. I'm on my own. That was like a personal belief that I had. Like if I want to do something, I have to do it by myself. And I had to give that up because I was like, I'm a mom <laughs> now. So, you know, once you become a parent and you're like, okay, I, there's no way I can do all the things that I want to do unless I start building a team around me, building support around me, delegating. And hiring a coach has been one of the most impactful things that I've personally done for my career in terms in my comedy stuff, right? I'm, I'm a stand-up comedian and I'm just, I took a long break and now I'm getting back into the game. So I was like, okay, how do I not shortcut my success, but really get into the mindset of, and, and in alignment with somebody who's already done what I want to do. So thank you for sharing that. And before we leave, I just wanted to share a quote by William H. Murray about commitment. Is that okay? Of course. It says, until one is committed, there's hesitancy, the chance to draw back, always in effectiveness. Concerning all acts of initiative and creation, there is one elementary truth, the ignorance of which kills countless ideas and splendid plans. That the moment one definitely commits oneself, then providence moves too. All sorts of things occur to help one that would never otherwise have occurred. Uh, you know, that's, that's wonderful. And thank you for sharing that. And, and I just want to clarify a little bit. When you mentioned earlier about shortcut, right? We're not talking about cutting corners. We're talking about what is the best, better way, what is the faster way to do certain things because you still have to do all the work. A lot of times the coach see more potential in you than you can, right? I yes. mean, when, when I first started working with my mentor, Sharon Lecter, um, she, she could tell me from the very beginning that I could do more. And it took me about two years <laughs> to agree with her, <laughs> you know, that this is where I should focus, right? So the, the mentor see that, the mentor give you the guidance, the shortcut, and that's how you achieve faster. 100%. And I'm so happy. I, I could go on for hours and hours and hours about this topic because it's, I, I love personal development. I love personal growth. And I'm, and I, again, I could talk to you for hours, <laughs> but we're coming up at the top of our time. So I'm afraid that that's all the time we have for today. Thank you, Dr. Latran, for joining us. It was a pleasure and a privilege to have you. Well, thank you so much for having me on the show. It's my absolute honor. I uh, wish everybody a wonderful day, great life, and may the floss be with you. <laughs> so my friends, to learn more about Dr. Emily Latran, you can visit her website, Dr. Emily Latran, and that's D-R-E-M 
I L Y L E T R A N dot com. And if you have any suggestions for future guests or topics, we'd love to hear from you. Also, be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast platform as well as follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Asian Voices Radio is produced by Asian Culture and Media Alliance, a nonprofit that empowers our API community with a voice through media arts. If you would like to support our program and make a donation, please visit AsianVoicesRadio.com. Thanks for listening. I'm Linda Schwartz. Please join us next week for another exciting and thought-provoking Asian Voices Radio show. Until then, take care, everybody. Thank you.